guys, welcome back. Today I am caking a very, very special Valentine's Day cake. So I'm starting with the bear. I found this image online. I printed it out and I am using this shape to cut out my fondant. So this is a technique that I like to use instead of buying cookie cutters, you literally print out the image that you want and then you use it to cut out your fondant. Now I made this shape maybe two days in advance because I wanted it to be nice and stiff so it would sit against my cake, but kind of look 3D, you know? So I'm just smoothing out those edges. If they're frayed, I want them nice and smooth so they look great on my cake. And then I'm gonna go in with some black fondant for the details. I trace out the ears the paws and the feet. And you'll see me a little later trace out the other shapes and a symbol. It's time to assemble. So I let my shape sit out for about an hour uh, before I assemble, just so the fondant kind of crusts over and they're easier to handle and won't kind of bend and misshape in a bit. I found that works best for a figure like this. I'm using water to glue everything together and I am using the original uh, printout to make sure that everything is placed symmetrically, just like the picture. I think this panda turned out super cute and I let her sit out for about two days before assembling my cake. So here I am frosting and layering my cake with a Wilton icer tip. I will leave the link and the tip number in the description box below. I did this a bit differently than normal um, because I did not do a chrome coat. So I typically do do a crumb coat, but with this icer tip, you don't necessarily have to do it because it puts like a thicker layer of frosting and you just smooth that frosting out and you're done. So I'm interested, if you use this icing tip instead of a spatula, comment below, let me know. Is it easier for you? Have you tried it and it worked and it didn't? I'm, I'm interested, so let me know. I let my cake chill in the refrigerator while I made my other decorations. So this is the elegant set from Sweet Stamps by Amy Cakes and I'm using it for the inscription on my cake. So I'm rolling out a piece of fondant in the shape of a ribbon. I'm using the guides for this so it's an even 
thickness and I am getting my letters out of the set. So I use a piece of fondant to kind of pick those letters up. It's easier than dumping them all out, I guess. <laughs> I spell what I need to spell and I am using the sticky pad to gently press and emboss my fondant. I'm folding this to give it some kind of movement so it's not just flat. So I kind of fold it and make it look like a flowing ribbon. And I let it dry for about an hour before I started to paint. So here is just some white food color gel that I'm using a fine tipped paintbrush to paint in between the letters. I went over this twice, I believe, because the first coat was kind of light. So I just went over it again to make it a bit more pronounced. Now I'm moving on to the dots, lots and lots of dots. <laughs> so I used a piping tip to create those dots out of black fondant. I'm gonna set those to the side and get to my ribbon. So with the same color fondant, I'm using another embossing tool that I will leave in the description box below. And I'm just imprinting my fondant so that my ribbon has a bit of texture to it. Now that all of our pieces are complete, we can assemble. So I'm gluing everything together with water. I have a fine mist spray bottle that I just sprayed the cake with before adding my ribbon and my dots. I sprayed the back of my cute little panda bear with water and I added her to the cake. I added my ribbon on top and I left the napkins in just so that the fondant bow could firm up a bit more and not collapse on itself. I'm adding my inscription and she is done. I just love the way this cake turned out. If you liked it as much as I did, go ahead and hit the like button. It would really help me out. Thank you so much guys for watching, subscribing and commenting and I will see you guys next week. Bye.